Hello, let me show you today how to use Excel to work with the sampling distribution of sample means. Let's use Excel to create a sample of random numbers, okay, with a size X. So let's, let's do this. We have this exercise. Let's create 20 samples of random numbers, right, with size 6, so N equals 6. Let this, uh, these 20 samples um, have a mean of 15 and a standard deviation of 3.5. What do we do now? In Excel, most likely, you will have um, the Home tab open, right? You're going to have to go to the Data tab. In the Data tab, move your mouse all the way across to the right side and see Data Analysis in the Analysis group. Now, probably most of you will not have this data analysis and analysis group, so you're going to have to actually put it into into um, into your into Excel. Okay, let me show you how to do this. So, if you don't have the uh, data analysis tool pack tool, that's what the data tab would look like, right? So there is nothing here. Okay, so let me show you how to how to put that in there. You're going to have to go to the uh, file if you're using. Excel or Microsoft Office 2010, or if you're using Microsoft 2007, you're going to use uh, Microsoft Office button, and that's the Office button right here. So you click on it, and then you go to Excel Options. Okay? When you go to Excel Options, you click on it, and then the Excel Options dialog box opens up. You're going to have to go to the Add Ins tab. Okay? Move your mouse over to the Go button right next to Excel Add-ins because the tool pack is an add-in. So you click on Go, and then in this add-in dialog box, you click on Analysis Tool Pack. So you're checking that to select it. Okay, you click OK, and now Data Analysis Tool Pack shows up right here in the Data tab. Once we have this Data Analysis tool here, we're going to click on it. Okay, that's the tool we're going to use to create a random um, number or random samples. So in the data analysis, scroll down, right, to find a random number generation tool. Click to select the random number generation and then click OK. In this dialog box, we're going to have to enter something here. All right, so in the number of variables, we're going to enter the number or the size of the samples, right? The size is six. So each sample will have six numbers, right? Okay? The number of random numbers is the number of samples that we want. So that's going to be 20. The distribution is normal, okay? Not discrete. We're using a normal distribution because the variables that we use here uh, is a continuous variable. Okay? So the normal distribution is done there. And uh, next, we'll put the mean of 15 right and a standard deviation of 3.5 if you saw carefully the mean was 0 and standard deviation was 1 because that's the z normal distribution okay the output range we're not going to put it in the new worksheet but we're going to put it into a range and we're going to start with this cell b6 here so i can click here okay and select cell b6 okay and then click on okay look what happens we have now 20 samples, starting from here all the way down here, of size 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? So that's great. 20 samples of size 6. And we should have a mean of 15 with a standard deviation of 3.5. Since this is a random uh, generation of numbers, okay, the mean may not be exactly 15 and the standard deviation may be exactly 3.5. We'll find out. Okay, so here's what I want to do right now. All of these samples, this is sample 1, right, of size 6. I'm going to find the mean of that sample. So I'm going to put the means right here in this column. So I'm going to put right here as a column header the mean or X bar symbol. So I'm going to bring that right over there. So that's the mean, okay? In this cell, I'm going to type in equals and average. So I'm going to just type equals sign AVE and then I'm going to double click on average, select these numbers, right? I don't have to put the close parenthesis, so I just hit enter. So that's now the mean 
of these samples okay what I do now I click on the auto fill button and then drag down so now I have a mean of all of these samples for each of these samples I have an X bar okay for each of these samples I have an X bar so what do I do in a sampling distribution of sample means so all of these are sample means so now I want a distribution of these sample means or means of each of these samples first I need to find out the mean of the sample means okay the mean of the sample means is this so I'm gonna to have to find the mean of the sample means right over here so that's the X double bar okay the X double bar or um, that could be the mu of X bar right so I'm gonna actually paste that over here too so the mu of X double bar is the same as saying the mu of X bar is the same as saying X double bar so that's the mean of the sample means so I'm gonna again type in equals average right and now I'm gonna find the average or the mean of all the means of the sample look at that this is 14.72 14.72 and we said according to the central limit theorem that the sample mean the mean of the sample means would be equal to the population mean right so all of these the mean of all of these numbers will be equal to that number right there let me see if that's exactly correct or accurate let me go here and find equal average right average of all these numbers so let me select all of these numbers here how about that the mean of all these random numbers right is equal to the mean of the sample means or the means of each of these samples that we um, generated here okay so that's that let me go right over here um, okay and uh, <clears throat> so this right here will be mu actually right here I'm going to find the standard deviation of all the numbers so I'm going to do X uh, equals st standard deviation st devp so that's what I'm going to do right select all the numbers and now I have a standard deviation of 4.169 let's find the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample means in other words right I'm going to find standard deviation of the sample means what we called standard error of the mean okay so now that's going to be the standard deviation of the sample means so that's going to be equals st standard deviation of the p of all of these means right and that's going to be 1.74 now why is the standard error of the mean smaller than the standard deviation of the population or these random uh, generated numbers we're going to have to answer that question and the answer is that the dispersion okay of a sample size six which is um, um, a sample that is larger than, than five four three or two or one has less error in the estimation of the true population so the uh, standard error of the mean is smaller because theoretically it has less error in estimating the true population mean so that means the larger sample uh, means that the distance from the true mean is as small as possible but uh, according to the central limit theorem right the standard error of the mean is found by dividing the standard error of the population by the square root of n so if I bring that formula over here okay that's what we're going to see the standard um, error of the mean equals standard deviation divided by the square root of n in this case the square root of n would be let's find out okay um, that's going to be equals square root sq rt of 6 because that's our sample and that's going to be this number right here so the standard error of the mean 
let's find it here, according to the formula, will be equals to standard deviation, which is that number, divided by the square root of n, right? Let's see if that's closer to 1.73. Okay, so that's that's close, but it's not, it's not equal, okay? And why is it not equal? Uh, remember that the central limit theorem holds true if the sample size is really large, okay? And we have more than 30 samples, okay? The size uh, and greater than 30. Our sample size right now is six, so we're gonna have to estimate some error in it. And this error is, is showing right here, okay? It's showing um, in the standard error of the mean. Okay, another thing that we probably need to show you here is the histogram or the distribution of this sampling means um, column. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to select all of them, right, all the sample means, go to Insert tab, go to Column, and then find the clustered column, right? So this looks more like a bar chart, but I'm going to go to the chart layout, and I'm going to select this histogram layout 8, which looks more like a histogram. Okay, we don't see much here, okay, a, any normal distribution, but again, bear in mind that our sample size is only 6. Okay, so we're going to start seeing a histogram that closely resembles a normal distribution when we have a sample size of greater than 30. Okay, that's what we... This here looks like a more of a uniform distribution, but if we had a sample size greater than 30, right, we would see a normal distribution. We would see um, a distribution that approaches normality. Okay, so that's how you use Excel, okay, to find uh, um, random numbers, to create the sample with random numbers with a size X, to find the sample means, to find the mean of the sample means, and the standard error of the mean. Okay, until next time, have a good day.